If OCD obsessions and compulsions are affecting your life, I want to share with you some tips to help you stop your compulsions and increase your confidence in the process. Hi, I'm Paige Pradko. I'm a therapist who specializes in treating OCD, health anxiety, and anxiety disorders. I left you a few gifts in the description of this video, including a free OCD assessment and a link to a PDF called the top 10 things you need to know to practice ERP, exposure and response prevention for OCD phobias and anxiety. I'm sharing tips on stopping compulsions today. And although you can't control your initial thought, you can control your reactions and behaviors. And by stopping your compulsions, your obsessive intrusive thoughts and urges will no longer be reinforced and they will begin to die down. How and why did your compulsions begin in the first place? Well, you had a thought or an image that scared you. Maybe it made you feel disgusted or uncomfortable or not just right. Now your thought not only scared you, but it caused you doubt. What if this happened or that happened? What if I did this or didn't do that? Or what if my thought or feeling never goes away? What do these thoughts even mean about me anyway? So you begin to lose trust in yourself and you want certainty and reassurance that something bad is not going to happen. The compulsion gave you a way of feeling like you had some kind of control and your brain received that message that you did something and then this lowered your anxiety or discomfort a bit. And that felt like it gave you kind of a reset. But don't be fooled. Compulsions create an illusion that you have some kind of control. But in actuality, you're only making it worse by feeding the OCD cycle. Every time you have an intrusive thought or image or urge and you choose to not do your compulsion, you're allowing your brain to learn that nothing bad happened and you're breaking the OCD cycle. Now, some people that have compulsions that are directly related to their fears. Kayla, for example, she's afraid that she'll accidentally burn her house down and she can get stuck in her compulsions for over an hour, checking to see that she unplugged her curling iron or that the stove is turned off. But other people's compulsions may not be directly related to their fear. Sean counts and recounts steps and tiles and he holds his breath to prevent something bad from happening to his parents. So whether you have compulsions that are directly related to your fear or, or your worst case scenario or not, the compulsion fulfills the same purpose and it feeds the OCD cycle. Now there are physical compulsions and there's mental compulsions. In OCD, there are always compulsions. Now physical compulsions include anything like you are physically doing or looking at the stove, checking it, seeing if it's turned off, you're washing your hands, you're blinking, you're tapping, you're correcting or redoing things. Uh, mental compulsions are a little trickier to identify. Some of the most common mental compulsions include mental checking, ruminating, and analyzing. Now mental checking is when you're mentally thinking, trying to see if you're thinking or feeling something. So of course, you will always find whatever you go looking for. And ruminating or analyzing is when you're trying to figure it out and get some kind of resolution to your thought. But the more you ruminate and analyze, the more you reinforce and feed the OCD cycle. There are lots of other mental compulsions as well, like repeating phrases or repetitive prayers in your mind, uh, counting, even wishing the thoughts away. Now here are four techniques or tips to help you stop your compulsions. Number one, write down all of your compulsions. Identify every physical or mental compulsion that you're doing or have done. You have to know everything you're doing in order to stop. Number two, become aware of yourself when you have an urge to compulse. Noticing the urge is your first opportunity to teach your brain that nothing bad happens when you do not give in to the urge and you do not do the compulsion. 
I realize I'm making this sound so simple and I understand how difficult it is. Every time you resist is a victory. One more lesson for your brain. If you didn't notice your urge, but maybe you caught yourself in the middle of performing a compulsion, challenge yourself to stop mid compulsion. This is a great victory and it's almost like waking up in OCD land and reconnecting with reality. Oh, I'm I'm ruminating right now. I just repeated a phrase. I'm correcting, I'm rewriting it again. I'm mentally checking again. I'm counting again. It, it helps my clients in these situations to use the I am method here. I'm gonna briefly review. The I and the I am method stands for identify. You identify an OCD thought, an image, a feeling, and in this case, you're identifying your compulsion oh, I was just ruminating or mentally checking. Once you call yourself out, I'm compulsing, then you can allow, uh, then you can allow the urge to compulse or the anxiety or the disgust or the incompleteness to just kind of hang there, just float there. Even if you just allow it to float there, you're, you're helping yourself. And then the A in the I am method is you allow it. You just allow, like I said, you allow that feeling, that incompleteness to float there in the background. And it might try to kind of suck you in and grab your attention, but you're in control. I know it isn't easy, but you can decide to allow the urge or feeling to just float there in the background. Then while it's floating there, just unattended, you shift your focus into something else in the moment. That's the M in the I am method. The I am method stands for identify, allow, shift to something in the moment, and move on. You're not trying to not have the urge or thought. You're letting it be there. You're not attending to it. You're not trying to resolve it. But you're consciously shifting your attention to the here and now, something you can focus on and do in the moment. Typically, it's whatever you were doing before you had the thought or the urge. I experience somatic awareness, OCD. I become aware of an automatic process of breathing. Uh, and at times, especially when I'm feeling stressed or maybe before bed. And my automatic process of breathing then feels like I have to make myself manually breathe. And my compulsions include checking to see if that was happening. And of course, the compulsion um, brought it on when I checked for it because you always find what you go looking for. And then I would begin my physical compulsion of kind of manually monitoring my breathing. Uh, the I am method is my way out. I identify my urge to compulse, or sometimes I catch myself in the middle of compulsing. And the A is allowing the awareness to be there. That's key for me. And then I can just kind of shift my focus in the moment, shift my awareness to something else. And you know, even though that somatic awareness is still floating there in the background, I shift. Now, the I am technique is a global strategy for OCD, and it's often my client's favorite technique among several approaches that I teach. Now, another tip for stopping compulsions is to write out specific rules for yourself. Now, the rules should be what you will allow and what you will not allow. Of course, response prevention is key for recovering from OCD and stopping your compulsions altogether. Response prevention means that we're not performing any compulsions before, during, or after exposures. And we continue response prevention practices forever. But sometimes some clients have this difficult time stopping their compulsions cold turkey. And you can still make progress by taking incremental steps toward eventually practicing full response prevention. So setting some rules is one way to take those incremental steps. An example of rules might be, I commit to only checking the door lock once after it's locked. I'll go through the motions of locking it in slow motion, and then I'm gonna check only once. And then I'm gonna leave the room or the house, and I'm gonna commit to not checking it again, no matter how strong my urge might be. 
Now, another example might be, I'll allow myself to wash my hands, maybe poorly, for not more than 20 seconds following using the restroom or before preparing food. Um, but afterwards, I'm gonna recontaminate myself. That recontamination piece is a method of keeping you in response prevention. If you have contamination OCD, I cover these strategies in detail in my OCD course on my website, pagepradco.com. For my fourth and final tip on stopping compulsions today is to track and record what happened and what you learned when you didn't compulse. Uh, this is called consolidation of learning, and it's part of the inhibitory learning model. It's a process of simply writing down or recording what you planned and what happened and what you learned. It actually helps it solidify, stay in your brain. Now, let me give you an example. My client Elise struggles with perfection and she spends hours a day reviewing and correcting and rewriting emails for work. Her fear is that if they're not perfect, she's gonna be humiliated or lose her job and lose the respect from her coworkers and her family, and then she's gonna to have to live with that shame. Now her ERP and consolidation of learning included her ERP plan uh, to write her emails once and commit to not performing any compulsions of rechecking, editing, or rewriting. Even if she saw errors and things she wanted to change, she committed to sending imperfect emails anyway. So she committed to like allowing the urge and anxiety to float there and then move on to her next task. So she detailed her plan and then described what she learned after her email writing exposure to consolidate her learning. She described that at first she thought she might not be able to do the exposure at all, but after she hit send on the first email, her anxiety spiked, but it was only momentary, you know, for a moment. And then as she continued her exposures, her urges and anxiety came down and it was much a quicker process than she thought it would be. So her consolidation of learning really did help her uh, recovery process. Stopping your compulsions is a learning process for your brain. You can go at whatever pace you want here. What can you commit to this week? Every time you make progress, no matter how big or small, it's a victory. That's how everyone recovers. It's one opportunity for your brain to learn at a time, one victory at a time. Your confidence then begins to build as you go. So resisting your compulsions is progress. Reducing your compulsions is progress. Stopping a compulsion in the middle of it is progress. Celebrate every single time that you have an urge to compulse and you don't do it. It's huge. It's a victory every time you stop yourself. So if you compulse and you feel like you messed up, you're not setting yourself back. We're, we're human. Just begin resisting the urge again. There's no perfection in OCD recovery, but the rewards of recovery and having freedom from your OCD is immeasurable. So don't forget that I left you some free gifts in the description of this video. And if you need help, I have an evidence-based, really phenomenal course to help you recover from pure O and OCD at pagepradco.com. Please leave me your comments and questions below. I'd love to hear how you're doing and let me know what you'd like to hear on a video. Until next time, I'll see you in session. Take care. Bye-bye.